In this video, we will demonstrate the initial configuration and testing of an ION Network's SA5600 ASG Defender Edition connected to an Avaya system, Avaya CM system at the customer site. The ION5600 ASG Defender Edition is a security appliance which provides IP and secure dial-up connectivity to Avaya Communications Manager and Heritage Nortel systems. The easy-to-install appliance allows technicians, service providers, and Avaya support services to conduct remote troubleshooting and maintenance of critical systems, as well as provides remote alarm notification over dial-up modem to your alarm track server. And keep in mind, this works along with System Platform, which uh, discontinued dial-up connectivity, but uh, now you can have your dial-up connectivity as well as uh, alarming over modem. Uh, back even with the uh, system platform. The SA5600 SAL edition is the same as the SA5600 ASG Defender edition with a full standalone SAL gateway pre-installed. First we'll connect with the SA5600 ASG Defender through the aux port on the back of the unit. We'll use a DB9 cable along with a null modem adapter to connect my PC using PuTTY uh, in this case, I'm going to be using COM1 at 9600 baud. I'll go ahead and attempt to log in. Begin aux session port, yes. Connect as a default user, yes. Okay, so I'm in on the system. This is a factory defaulted unit. Uh, it has the ASG Defender software already preloaded from the factory, so there's really only a few things I'm going to need to do. The first command we need to enter is SNP for Set Network Parameters. And it's going to give me a few options. The only one we're really concerned with is option 1. We're going to need to set the external interface to an IP address on our corporate network so that the Avaya CM system can send SNMP traps when an alarm occurs. So factory defaults, no. The internal interface we're going to leave open for now. The external interface, this is where we're going to need to enter an IP address. What I'm going to need to do here first off is I'm going to clear this line so I can enter my IP address. So I'm going to hit Control X to clear it and I'll punch in 192 dot one sixty eight dot one dot thirty I'm sorry one dot forty and my subnet mask I'm going to change so I'm going to hit Control X, I'll change this to 255.255.255.0. Default gateway, I'm going to make 192.168.1.1. And the name server is the same, 192.168.1.1. The PPP address I'm going to leave as the factory default. and set network parameters took. The second command is SSP for set system parameters. And the only option we're concerned with here is the action routine parameter, so I'm going to press 3. And I'm going to enter the telephone number of the alarm track server located back at my NOC. I'm going to enter it exactly the way the line needs to be dialed from the modem so if I need to insert a 9 ahead of the phone number, this is where I do it. In my case, I'm just going to enter 203-691-7007. I can leave everything else as default. All right, great. That took. The third command we need is AAIP for Add Avaya IP a Device.
In order for AlarmTrack to identify your system correctly, we need to name the Avaya device with the letter H plus the 10-digit product ID of the device we're adding. If we log into the Avaya CS CM system at a bash prompt and issue the command product ID, it'll, set the pro it'll tell us the uh, product ID of the system itself. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the device. It's going to be H1. 00057890. Host equipment night type, I'm going to hit the space bar till I get CM. The IP address, the IP, this is where we're going to need to know the IP address of the CM system itself. In this case, it's 192.168.1.30. And the Avaya IP address will be the same in this case, 192.168.1.30. Terminal connection type, we're going to use SSH. And the ports that they assigned for us look pretty good. 84, 43, 21, 22, and 5022. All we're really concerned with in the alarm check standpoint is port 22 to a bash prompt and 5022 to a SAT prompt. I'm not going to put any comments on here. Add another device? No. It's initializing the rules for the Avaya device. The final command we need to enter is AU for add user. I need to create a user so an alarm track or support personnel need to dial into the modem attached to the SA5600. They can authenticate and connect to the Avaya systems. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the username rdadmin. The access class I'm going to change by hitting the space bar to CMC master, I should say. I'm going to allow concurrent logins. I'll leave all this default. The primary authentication mode, I'm going to hit the space bar, change it from ASG key to a password callback. I'm going to enter a password. In the access options, I'm going to change it from regular callback to pass through. The SA5600 is now configured to receive SNMP traps from the Avaya CM system and relay those alarms via dial up modem to your alarm track server. So now we need to set the trap destination on the Avaya system itself. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a connection to the CM system. As you know, we said the IP address was 192.168.1.30. I'm going to connect using SSH. And I'm going to log in as dadmin. Terminal type of VT100, and I'm in. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, verify the product ID. So I'm going to issue the product ID command and verify. Yep, our product ID is just as we entered it in the username, which is 1000567890. Now I'm going to take a look at the INADS trap destinations. The command I'm going to issue is ALMSNMPCONF. I'll hit Enter. And as we see, there are no destinations assigned. So we're going to go ahead and enter the IP address and the community string of the SA5600 that we just configured. So I'm going to enter ALM SNMP CONF. I'm going to use the D switch for the product or the uh, IP address. So dash D and 192.168.1.40. I'm going to use the C switch for the community string, which is going to be public. I'll hit enter. Now I'll go ahead and verify that with just uh, entering the command again. ALM, SNMP, CO, and F. And I see uh, that we are now configured.
Now we can test our work by issuing the test dynads command and follow the flow of the test alarm. What we should see here after I enter the command is we should see the SNMP trap received by the SA5600 up here on my uh, on my putty screen above and it will immediately attempt to dial out to the alarm track server. Once it sends the alarm to the alarm track server, the alarm track server will be acknowledge the alarm back to the SA5600 uh, acknowledging that it received the alarm at which point the SA5600 will send a reverse trap acknowledgement back to the Avaya CM system acknowledging that the alarm was received correctly. Uh, that's when if you ever notice uh, if you look at your display alarms um, from uh, ASA or from anywhere you'll see if the alarm was acknowledged with a yes or a no and when it was acknowledged and uh, we should see the call acknowledged on the uh, bash prompt as well. So right here on my uh, from the CM server I'm going to issue test dynets and then we're going to look up here and wait for it. It should only take a few seconds and there it is the trap was received or trap being sent by the CM system to the SA5600 and phone trap scheduled so we'll see that that is I can actually hear my lab system calling right now so the alarm track server at the knock is now ringing and we'll wait for the alarm to be sent usually takes about 10 seconds after the modem answers And there it is. The alarm was acknowledged by the SA5600 from the alarm track server. The SA5600 then when turned around and issued an acknowledged trap to the communications manager and as we see from the communications manager the reply from the communications manager test message was sent to INADS and the reply was call acknowledged. And now our SA5600 modem is now idle, and we'll sit and wait for the next trap. And that just about wraps up our demonstration of the ION Network's SA5600, along with the Navaya CM system, uh, reporting to an alarm check server at our knock. Thanks again for watching.